Welcome back to my channel. This is Katrina Sargent or Devil Doll Custom Creations. Today I'm doing an epoxy split cowhide tumbler with glitter and a crackle effect. You need to find the equal divided lines for your prepped tumbler. So if you make a circle of the circumference of the bottom, split it in half, you will get your equally divided tumbler in half. Mark it with a pencil, tape it off, I'm sorry it's not in the camera's view very well right here, but all I'm doing is lining the bottom along the pencil line and then bringing up the sides to make straight lines. If you don't feel comfortable eyeballing it, you can use a straight roller and line it up on the tumbler to see if it is straight or not. Once you have your tumbler completely divided in half, you're gonna to wanna to cover the half you're not working on at the moment. I'm gonna be spray painting the entire one half a pink color, so I just use cling wrap and tape it on that side that's gonna stay white for the time being. I spray paint the entire half that is not taped off. The top part I'm doing a crackle, so I add a little splatter of dark and lighter it gives a good variation under the crackle. Here I am just taking painter's tape and going to tape off the part that I'm going to do glitter in the future. Now onto the crackle. I use Elmer's glue and a brush. I brush it on heavy. Do not let your glue dry. You're gonna to wanna to kinda of slop it on. The heavier the layer of glue is, the bigger cracks you're going to see in your paint. If you want more of that small hairline fracture, you're gonna to wanna to do a thinner coat. Make sure your entire section is covered all the way to the tape, all the way to your rim. Repeat, do not let your glue dry. Immediately add your acrylic paint. You don't want to rebrush a spot you've added your paint. If you do, don't do it more than once. The more you mess with it, the more it can change your look of your crackle. The thicker the paint, the more opaque the crackle is gonna look. Now just walk away from it. Let it fully dry overnight before you move on to the next step. Here it is fully dry. You can see the differences between the little cracks versus the bigger cracks or where my paint was heavier or thinner. Now, once it's fully dry, you're gonna take a craft knife and cut along the edge of your tape. If you just try to pull up your tape, it is gonna pull up your acrylic paint and you're gonna lose your whole crackle effect. Once you cut it off, it is easier to roll your tape. So in case you did have a little bit attached to the tape still, it's not going to completely pull back your paint as bad. Now we're gonna move on to the glitter section. I like to reuse my tape instead of get a new piece, but it's totally up to you, you can get a new piece. Don't put tape on the top where the crackle is. You just bump your brush with Mod Podge to that line and then pull it down. Make sure you don't have any major streaks or anything in your Mod Podge because it will show under your glitter. Okay, at this step, then I let my Mod Podge fully dry. I actually do two different types of sealing. I add a clear spray paint, and then I add my quick coat once that is fully dried. You're gonna want to tape off your sections even for the quick coat. I do my quick coat even in sections. I don't want that glitter to travel, so I do my top section first of the crackle, and then once I'm happy with that, I then use it on my glitter. I kinda pounce my finger onto the glitter and let that turn for about 45 minutes to an hour to let the quick coat dry fully before moving on to epoxy. 
on the safe side, I usually do epoxy in sections just out of habit. You do not have to do this. Since this is facet, as soon as I get my epoxy on, I hit it with my heat gun and then I hit it with my torch to pop any micro bubbles. Clean up any extra spillover you have because this white section is going to be our cowhide. Now moving into the water slide, I tape off the section I've already epoxied. It's just a helpful for me. You don't have to do that. You're going to need a craft knife, scissors, a silicone makeup brush, a rag or something to dry your water slide off, and a tin of lukewarm water. This is white water slide. I will link everything in the description. Cut it out and you're gonna submerge it in the water. It's gonna curl up, that's fine. You want your tumbler, your hands, everything to be wet anytime you're messing with water slide. If you don't, you can mess up the image, you can pull up some ink. You have to be gentle with water slide. Once it kind of moves from the back in a little bit, I start on one side and I kind of hold it down and pull back the back. Don't pull on your water slide itself, pull on the backing. And then you're gonna kind of run your wet hands or wet silicone brush on just to make sure it has good contact with the tumbler. Work gently and try to push out any extra water or bubbles you have as you go. It's easier to leave the backing sheet on as long as possible. I'm not worrying about the top or the bottom at this moment. I'm just working around my tumbler and then I will do the edges. Right there, I just ripped off a little piece. I pulled on it a little bit too tight. Luckily, it was going to the bottom of the tumbler and it's not noticeable. Once you have it around the tumbler, now is gonna be when you're going to use different directions. So you're gonna to wanna to pull from the middle out to where I taped, or if you don't tape, where your epoxy line is. If you see any wrinkles or fill any ridges, that means there's water and air under your water slide and you have to get those out. Once I'm happy with how it is laying on my tumblers, when I'm gonna to move to my top edge and my bottom edge. I just fold it over the top. Make sure you don't have any creases, make sure you don't have any folding or anything weird happening. I just fold it over the top and then once it's fully dry, I cut that rim off. The bottom, I just kind of tuck it and fold it over the edge. There is gonna be a little bit of folding on the bottom, unfortunately. You can cut that off if you feel like it. I don't usually, you can if you would like. I let my water slides dry for about an hour to two hours before I cut off my extra. If you try to cut it when it's still really, really wet, you're going to potentially pull up or shift your water slide. This is why I do the tape because I can kind of just peel back the tape after I cut. I just found it was a little bit easier. If you do do it when it's slightly wet, you wanna make sure there's no moisture in that edge you cut off.
I wait till my water slides are fully dry. So this is probably about three hours sitting before I do my rim. All I do is I take a very sharp craft knife and I run it along the edge of my tumbler. Once I have the majority of the water slide cut off the edge, I then take my blade at a slight angle just to get enough little tiny stainless steel to show because your epoxy has to adhere to a stainless steel on the side of the tumbler, not the top where the lid goes. So this just kind of helps so when you're doing your rims later, you don't pull up your water slide or damage it in any way. Once everything is fully dry, I add quick coat. Sometimes water slides can expel your epoxy. So I'm just adding quick coat to the entire tumbler to get a nice glass finish. Let that dry before epoxy. You're gonna want your tumbler to be smooth as a baby's bottom before you add your metallic strips. The metallic vinyl will show any lumps and bumps. So if you don't get a perfect glass-like finish, just let this cure, do wet sand, and do another coat before you do your metallic strips. I'm using the Arteza vinyl for my strips. You can see any of my other videos on my divided tumblers on how to make these strips. I just create it in my silhouette, cut it out, and then I'm just gonna use the lines to cover my divided areas. I usually do the sides first and then wrap it on the bottom, and then where they meet, use a sharp craft knife and cut it off. You're also going to want to cut the top a little under where your rim is. You want to have that completely sealed in so it doesn't come back up or pill up when you do your epoxy. On this line, you're just going to take your craft knife after you kind of use your nail to make a little indent and cut off the extras. If you don't have any nails, you can flip your craft knife over and use the doll side to make that little indent so you know where to cut off. And just run your finger along your vinyl to make sure it has good contact with the tumbler. This sometimes leaves fingerprints or smudges. So I take a coffee filter and a little bit of 91% alcohol to run it along my metallics to clean off any imperfections before you epoxy. Since I forgot I was doing another water slide, I wet sanded this tumbler between the epoxy coats and my metallic vinyl strips. So I have to do an entire coat of epoxy just so I can put another water slide on because you cannot put a water slide on a sanded epoxy. You will see the scratches under the clear water slide. So if I would have remembered this, I would have just sanded the edges and not sand on my crackle part where I'm having my next water slide. But I forgot, so I'm doing another step. Here's my final step, my clear water slide I found on Etsy. I will link it in the description below. You just wanna cut around your edges before you put it in your lukewarm water. You're gonna do the exact same thing like you did on the cowhide. And you're just going to want to measure it somewhat center. It's sometimes hard with the divided line sloping up and down to get it 100% center. But just you can eyeball it or take a ruler to it if you're really OCD about that. Make sure your water slide is 100% dry before moving on to the next step. 
Now on to hopefully the final coat of epoxy. I do quick coat on all water slides. Let it dry and then epoxy. If it is not a perfect finish and it's not super, super smooth, wet sand and do another coat of epoxy. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please give me a thumbs up, share my videos, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you are always notified every time I post new videos. If you have any questions or concerns, please write in the comments. I will get back to you. I also have a Facebook group, facebook.com, Devil Doll Community.